Hey y'all, Tom, ND3N here, and thanks for dropping in for a ham shack chat. This time, we are going to be looking at a more functional use of your radio system, rather than the fun and games we've been focusing on so far. Fun and games, and girls. Winlink lets you send and receive emails through your radio over the air without the use of an internet connection. This video will start by describing the WinLink infrastructure, show you how to download WinLink and what I consider to be the best available virtual TNC, VARA HF. I'll also show you how to create a WinLink email, connect your rig to the TNC, connect your ham radio system over the air to the WinLink system, and I'll be demonstrating how to create, send, and receive WinLink emails. At the end, I'll talk about several potential ways to use WinLink, and I'll invite you to send me a WinLink email, which I will respond to. Now, for brevity's sake, I've put in a few ground rules for this video. First, all websites mentioned are linked in the video description with a further description of what those links do. Second, all FT891 menu and function settings are listed in the video description for your later reference. And finally, sit back and enjoy. Get yourself a cup of coffee. I hope you are entertained and maybe even learn a little something. As always, if you have any questions, suggestions, concerns, or just want to post a greeting, please comment down below. A couple of websites of interest. First off is the WinLink main page. Come over here to Downloads. Then you're going to click on User Programs. And you're going to download this one down on the bottom, WinLink Express Install. I assume that you know how to download and install a program. Next, we have the Vera HF download site. And right here on top is the Vara HF TNC download. Next, in addition to your rig, you're going to need an external sound card. The one I recommend is the Signalink USB. This is the main page for Tigertronics and gives you all the information you need about downloading it. The best price I found was on Ham Radio Outlet with a price of $134.95. And this is the Signalink USB version that you want to purchase if you're using the FT891. The infrastructure for the WinLink Express system is actually pretty simple. You start with your station right down here. You're going to go over the air up to what's known as an RMS, which is a radio message server. There are numerous radio message servers conveniently placed around the world. And here you can see uh, where they all show up on a map. And from here, your email will be sent over the internet to the common message server, which are actually two cloud servers that WinLink uh, leases from Amazon. From here, the common message server will send your email to the address that you specified when you created it in WinLink Express. Receiving a WinLink is just as easy. So someone starts an email back to you. That goes up to the CMS and it sits there for a while. Meanwhile, you come over here and you log into WinLink Express and tell it to start the process. The RMS is going to ping the CMS, download your email, and bring it back to you. Once you get all this up and running, I'd like to invite you. Go ahead and send me an email at nd3n at winlink.org. By the way, your email address will be your call sign at winlink.org, and I will certainly reply to you. I check for WinLink emails daily and reply to them as they come in, so you'll get a reply back from me. It may just say thumbs up, but you'll get a reply back. So you can test your system out both ways. If you're enjoying this so far, please take a moment to pop that thumbs up icon 
and give me a like. You like me. You really like me. Now that we've got everything loaded up and installed, we're going to start by opening up WinLink Express, which is in this checkerboard icon. And I've got it down in my taskbar as well. Because I use it a lot, so I put the things I use a lot down there. Now we're going to enter the email program by clicking that icon right there. I'm going to put my information in here. So here's how I've set it up. You can see that it sets up just like pretty much every other email program out there. I put in my personal Gmail account, arsnd3n at gmail.com, gave it a subject, and gave it a message. Uh, this is a demonstration of the WinLink Express with the VARA HFTNC. Let's get this party started. Let's get this party started! Tom ND3N. Now that we've got our email written, we need to post it to our outbox. Our outbox is right here, and you'll see there are zero in there. I'm going to post it. There we go. And from here, I'm going to open up our session. Our session is set as Vera HF WinLink. You do have other options in there. Uh, RDOP WinLink is the basic one that comes with it. Pretty slow, pretty clunky. Vara HF is much better. Open our session. And you see our session opening up over here. I have connected to Vara. And it's a registered version of Vara TNC that can operate at full speed. We're going to come up here to our settings and go our VARA TNC settings. All of this should be just like it shows here. Make sure that these two blocks are checked. That's more for convenience than anything else. The first block is automatically launch VARA TNC when session is opened. Second block is show the VARA TNC screen when it's launched. If you don't check these, it'll come up reduced. So you'll have a bar down here. So you got to go through another step to open it up. I'm not going to update because I made no changes. If I did update, the whole thing would disappear and reset itself. So I'll just cancel out of that. Another setting up here that we want is our radio setup. And you can see that I did stick a picture of my radio. So you're going to see what's happening on the radio as we go. And the big thing that we're going to deal with is the ALC settings. So let me put it on ALC. And so ALC will come up. And we'll adjust the ALC when we get to that point. On this site, on this pop-up, you want to make sure that your radio model is selected. So the Yaesu FT891, there's a pull down and you can see it highlighted down there. You want to set to USB digital. I have the appropriate settings for USB digital mode settings and functions on the 891 down in the video description. Now I assume you know how to check this first by setting it up in your menu items and then verifying it on using the device manager. If not, leave a comment and I'll give you more explanation. This is my enhanced virtual COM port, COM9, and I have that set at a baud rate of 9600. No need for RTS or DTR. For push to talk, what you want to do, once again, use the pull down, select your FT891 from the pull down, and just to show you what will happen if you do click update, And that's what happens. Now, coming down here, we're going to go, this is the uh, TNC block. We're going to go to VARA setup. You're going to see that we have our command and data. These are pretty much defaults that are going to come up. You want to put your call sign in here. ND3N is mine. Put yours in there. You also have a registration key. This is if you purchase a registration key. And you do that through the same site that you downloaded VARA from. You don't need to have one to make this work. There are some benefits. You get to use higher speeds. Things seem to work a little bit better. And of course, you want to let VARA check for updates. You want to accept 500 hertz connections. 
I like to have a CWID at the end so it sends out my call sign at the very end. And it's got a keep it simple, stupid. Means keep it simple, stupid, not kiss. Interface. So I use that. Your retries, you have a selection between 1 and 30 in steps. I like it at 10. That means that down, uh, once you try to make a connection, it will attempt to make that connection 10 times before it'll kick you off. And you got to pick a different source. You close that. And now here's a little fun stuff. You want to make sure the audio codecs for your external sound card, in my case a signal link, are up here. I've got that. I'm going to set my ALC and they recommend one third ALC. I'll give you a little fudge factor on that. Anything between a third and a half is great. Let me turn this on. You can hear the tone going. My ALC is now reading right down there and I'm going to reach over here and adjust my TX on my signal link until it comes to the pro appropriate place. And that's a good place. I'm going to come back here and clear it. And uh, while we're talking about the signal link, close that. Clicking here on channel selection. These are all the channels that are out there. And you get a path reliability and path quality. And it, it judges these numbers and sticks the best ones up on top. Occasionally, you'll get a message saying, hey, it's been a while since you did this. Why don't you update? Well, this will update all of these and do all the math and give you your latest and greatest path quality and path reliability. I'm going to update via Internet. You can also update by the radio, but it's going to take you close to an hour to download all of that. That is all updated. I'm going to use the W6 IDS, which is in my favorites. And you can add to your favorites right there. So I'm just going to click that. It's going to set my radio. And we're going to start. You can see right here. It is saying it's going to send my email with the 04D3, which is this one, 043D message ID. And I'm sending that now. We'll start to see some activity up here. There we go. It sent the whole thing in one shot. It completed and sent the message. And now I'm disconnecting and you'll hear my call sign come up here momentarily. Another thing that I did want to show you if I wanted to send a new one, I'm going to just pop up a new email and right down here you can add an attachment. Be wary of that. Try to keep them minimal because it can take a long time to send an attachment. Let me pop up my Gmail and you'll see that here's the WinLink demo that I just sent. This is a demonstration of the WinLink Express with VARI HF TNC. Let's get this party started. I'm going to simply reply to that and say, Yay, it works. Tom ND3N. Of course, you don't have any limitations on how many words you can put in there, but for demonstration purposes, this will do just fine. I'm going to send that out of my Gmail channel selector and pick it out this way. I don't want to use the same one I used last time. I wanted to show you a little bit of diversity. So we're going to go to NE4SC. He should be all set up and ready to go. So we'll start him. And I made that connection. By the way, he is in South Carolina. I'm in Southwest Ohio. It does tell you my range is 718 kilometers. And just waiting for it to go through its turn on.
and I am going to be receiving an email with the label Y1D1, and I will click on my inbox. So as soon as that gets done receiving, it'll show up in my inbox. You can see my little green line up here is growing. It is going from right to left. When I sent it, it grew from left to right. And you can keep track right here. I've, my email size is 576, of which I've received 296. So you can watch that right there. You can get a good review of what's happening in your background here with uh, how fast your data is going out. This also shows you signal to noise. That is the process. It's here in my WinLink email and I am out of there. I can now close that. I'm just going to double click and you'll see I've got it here. Yay, it works, Tom ND3N. From here, you can reply. If you get a fresh email and you just want to reply to someone, you can. I just go like that. It pops up that again. You just add to it, load it up to your outbox, and you're ready to go. And that is done and dusted. Well, almost. You can put this skill to work and practice it pretty easy. Now, I make a point of logging into WinLink on a daily basis. Right up there is my WinLink email address, in case you forgot it from earlier. And I invite you to shoot me an email once you get this all working. And I will respond. Now, I even have a few folks that I exchange emails with regularly. Please help me to get the word out to fellow hams by sharing... What's the 411? <laughs> this video, especially on social media and in your club meetings. If you want, take this video to your club and make a presentation. The main point with WinLink is, for me, the knowledge that I can now use it in a SHTF scenario. Earthquakes, hurricanes, tornadoes, and other natural disasters, not to mention civil unrest, require the mobilization of local emergency services like fire, police, hospitals, and other first responders, as well as non-governmental organizations like the Red Cross, Samaritan's Purse, and the Salvation Army, just to name a few. All of these groups need to be kept informed of the situation on the ground, and many times, internet is non-existent. If you want to be involved in circumstances like this, contact your local ham radio emergency coordinator, who you will likely find within your local club. If you don't have one locally, check with your ARRL state EC, and they will put you in touch with the right people. You will need to complete a couple of online courses, which are actually pretty easy. And then you'll be able to help when those times come. By the way, I am the Ham Radio Emergency Coordinator for Fayette County, Ohio. Thanks for taking time to watch this video. If you found it informative and helpful, maybe even a little entertaining, please consider subscribing. Sorry, you already subscribe. 73 until the next Hey Y'all. As always, I am at your service. I'm Tom, ND3N, looking forward to getting a message from you on WinLink. Until then, I am out.